And do you remember this photo? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> That's so funny. But no, yeah. I, I love this one because it very much shows, it's like the perfect example of how Nan was. Nan, <laughs> nine children, a mountain of grandchildren. <laughs> and she always made you feel like you were her favorite. Yeah, but like, I was clearly her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> So our family comes from Angola, that's where our um, grandparents met. Um, they moved over to Portugal in 1975 after the civil war broke out. Um, our granddad was there as a white soldier, Portuguese, and he met my grandma, a black Angolan woman. So you can just imagine the controversy. I mean, it's the coloniser with the colonised. With that came a lot of complications and a lot of racial issues already from my grandmother's side, really, so... Yeah, it's a very chaotic time for them, but they somehow managed to make it work. Mm. When they moved to Portugal and are hearing stories from Nan, her telling us every, her family background and seeing how their relationship was in the country where there really were, weren't that many black people in, in the city. She came from a, from a situation of being surrounded by black people to actually being the only one where she was living really. But even through that, she, she was incredible. She's like the perfect example of humble beginnings and no, there was no job that was too small for her. So she used to work for the council, sweeping the streets all around the neighborhood and everybody used to know her because she was constantly the life of the streets, saying hi to everybody. Yeah, it was pretty much incredible to grow up with her uh, with that example. She was really the pillar of our family. She really brought us together in the good and the bad times. Our nan was the first one within our family to become a Christian and it was a massive thing within our family because she was raised from a tribal witchcraft background and to come from that which was so different to know Jesus Christ was incredible but it meant that it was a dramatic change for that the whole of the family so literally everyone became a Christian and that was us we became Christians and she would always take us to church made sure that Sundays were there with her and that was incredible always remember going over on a Sunday after church for a famous roast um, so it was always a happy time with her. She really instilled great values onto her children that then passed it on to us. Yeah, and I think when we think back to the way that our, our family was raised and how we were taught to be as, as children, that's exactly how I envision, and I think Eva and Jess can agree, how we envision that we want our families to be. Um, just a family that's solidly built on love for one another, um, constantly edifying each other and yeah just celebrating our, our greatness really. Yeah so our parents were missionaries so we were constantly traveling throughout Europe eventually we settled in Sweden and yeah that was a whole other thing especially for me and Jess being the only black people within our neighborhood there because we were young we didn't so much feel it but I think that when we came to the UK it was a completely different story. Yeah Definitely, because coming from Portugal, where we went from Sweden to Portugal, and in Portugal we were the only black kids in our school, and then we came to England and there was so much diversity that we were like, wow, I've never seen an Indian So this is how it's meant to be. <laughs> yeah, and it was great seeing all the diversity, but it was definitely a challenge as well, even amongst the diversity. Me, personally, I struggle with school people making fun of me because I didn't really know how to speak English and I struggled learning the language and I always had to go to Igor to <laughs> defend me and yeah. so he was always there as a great big brother. <laughs> and still today, um, it still happens really. Um, I was going to the supermarket and someone told me straight to my face that I shouldn't be there, people like me shouldn't be there. So yes, there's still a lot to be learned and still a lot of work to be done. I think situations like that just come as that reminder that I think I personally as a black woman do need as much as I am quite confident and sure of my own blackness there are people around us that aren't and that don't understand what it actually means to be uh, a black woman a black man in a predominantly white society mm -hmm. and so having those experiences almost is that little push in the right direction to to remind us that we need to be that voice and that that yeah. you know that that force that's almost 
waking people up, you know, and um, giving them that reminder that, you know, we're, we're, we are black, we are different, but just as special as you, and <laughs> yeah. I think celebrating Black History Month now, it's, it's massive because, especially over the last five years, Black History Month has been a conversation within the country. Beforehand, I very much see it as being a conversation that was had behind closed doors, whereas now everybody is starting to get aware of issues that we might have faced and things that you might have thought that, no way you could have experienced that. And I think with that awareness comes a lot of unity. And within that unity, we just start loving each other more. That's it.